What if I told you by the end of this video, I could make you a better programmer? What I'm going to show you is how to read between the lines of an API document, how to write code and using tools like Visual Studio's IntelliSense to your advantage to not only write better code, but really understand what's going on. I always say it's more important to know what the code is doing than knowing how to write it. And that's because examples and tutorials can be found online in multitudes of places. What a lot of beginner programmers don't understand is what is the logic behind the code. They're more concerned about where the semicolon goes, where the period goes, more so than actually learning how to read what the API document is providing you. And even though those examples aren't always the best, they are a starting stone to get you thinking how those developers of those black box APIs, third party software, works behind the scenes and how you can implement that into your program. Now I'm going to be talking mostly about game development because that's my passion, that's what this channel is all about. But this will carry over to any kind of development that you might do. Web development, mobile development. So if you have an API in mind that you want to implement into your program, then just follow along and, and use these tips to help you in your journey in developing a service layer class that might expand the functionality of your application. Or in case of game development, using Unity's API to play sounds, rotate objects, give them some artificial intelligence. All of this is aimed to make you a better developer, not reliant 100% on Googling or YouTubing tutorials for every little feature that you might want to implement. While that's perfectly acceptable, this will help you understand why that developer that created the tutorial did it that way and help you Again, like I mentioned, read between the lines. It's not super important to memorize these lines of code. Instead, it's more important to know how we got there. It's a journey. What does the syntax do is more important than where it goes or how it looks. So join me as we look at my game, Spookville Cabin Escape, and specifically how I implement Unity's API into some of the scripts that I use for all of my objects, including the ally system and the enemy system. My name is Chad McRae. I'm a game developer with two published games, Cowboy Clickers and Potion Blasters, and I'm currently working on my third game, Spookville Cabin Escape. And these little tricks I've been using for the past eh, six years, and that's really when it clicked. Now, can I sit down and just crank out code like those programmers you see on movies and TV shows? Absolutely not. But that's not what's important. What's important is I know how to write clean, maintainable code. That if there's a bug later, or even more of an enhancement that I want to do, I know how to do it. I may not know exactly the syntax, but I know by looking into Unity's documentation, I can find a good enough example, change up the variable names, the method names, or even what the behavior is, and then modify it to what fits best for my project. So, this is the Unity Editor as I'm sure all of you are aware. And this is my game, Spookville Cabin Escape. There's a couple quick tricks I want to show you. The first of which, on any object in the game, in the hierarchy, you can click on it, and in the inspector will show you all of the information about that. It'll be showing you the colliders that are attached to it, any animation components, it'll also show you any scripts that have behaviors attached to it. So let me start by just showing you Looking at the AR nerf gun that's in the game, here are all of the scripts that are attached to it. We've got a couple materials, a mesh render, which just turns on and off the visibility, box collider, sound invoker, a weapon script, an oscillator script. I have a rotate script. If the player sees it in the game, let me show you real quick. Inside of the game, all of these scripts work by executing in a sequence. And so there, I can see that the oscillator script, that little slight bounce up and down, and that rotate script is working appropriately. And that box collider has a collision on it with a is trigger uh, property uh, set to true, so that I know when there's a collision with that nerf gun, that it's going to send an on trigger event back to a script that's going to perform some logic. And what's really nice is that in the Unity Editor, I can go straight to the script that I'd like to see the code behind. 
by double clicking here in this, this field here. So this is my favorite part of the day is when I first open up Visual Studio and I'm going to look at some code. This feature here, the Sound Invoker, and this is a small class I wrote that has an audio clip property to it and it also has a boolean to specify whether the sound has been picked up or has been played or not. And the purpose of this class is solely to detect that trigger. If the object that collided with the object that this is attached to, for instance, uh, my player colliding with this Nerf gun, if that object has the tag of player and the sound has not played, then I'm going to get the, com the audio source and I'm going to assign it the audio clip by assigning this property here and then I'm going to play it. Now, looking at this, there's a couple things wrong with my code. And this is where the power of understanding what the code is doing can become powerful. So the very first thing I see is in the class declaration, in the sound invoker class, it requires a, an audio source. Okay, that makes sense because we're going to play a sound. But if I have a requirement of an audio source, down here, does it make sense to get the component of the audio source? Or should I maybe have a private property called audio source on this object and get it that way. It's tick for tack, but performance wise, already having a local variable that represents the audio source is a lot quicker than using the get component function to pull out the audio source. So let's just do a little refactoring. The very first thing I'm going to do is specify this as a serialized field and that will put it in the editor. I can see it inside of the editor if it's a private property. And then what object type is this property going to be? And that's going to be audio source because I'm replacing these two lines with a cleaner local property instead of using the get component function. So I'm going to say audio source. And now I need to give it a name. And this name should be meaningful. And so I will just call it audio source. Following the naming standard of lowercase first letters and then capital letters for each of the next word in the name. Now that I have an audio source here, I should probably assign it on the start or the awake function. Between the two, start and awake, it makes sense to use start if the object's already instantiated in the scene before it loads. So like in this case, my gun is available for pickup as soon as the scene loads. But this object also gets instantiated or created when the player might drop a weapon to replace it with another. In that case, I need to use awake. So it's better to use awake because that encompasses both the use case of available at the start of the scene loading and at any time that the object might be instantiated. So I'm going to implement the awake function here. And there you can see IntelliSense kind of picked it up and carried it over. And I am going to just do a quick conditional. I'm going to say if audio source, our new property is null. So I have an insight, this will be true if I have not assigned it yet in the editor, then I'm going to say audio source equals get component. And then these little brackets here specify that I'm going to be providing a generic. And this could be any other class. You can see the T here helps tell me that that's a generic. So I could get any kind of component on this object I want. And if it doesn't exist, it'll just give me null, also modifiable by code. And that's the power of understanding how to read the API documentation. So now I'm in the actual scripting part of the API document. This has an example of an audio source being modified and manipulated via code. And it also has references to things that relate to the audio source component, including audio listener, the audio clip again, and the audio source component, which is what we were just looking at. So if I look through here, this example shows me that how to play a sound based on clicking a button. And then remember those properties we looked at uh, on the other screen? Here they are in a more verbose way, but the big difference is these are the properties on how they are spelled and how they appear inside of the code editor. There's some beautification that Unity does between the source code and the editor. And it's important to understand the difference while the spelling is typically the same, there's some nuances that sometimes some developers inject to personalize the code to their liking. And that could be a Unity standard or just that person's preference. So as I scroll through the list of properties, I also come down to the methods that are on the audio source object. So here I can see our play method. 
and that's what plays the clip. And then like almost all Unity components, it inherits from the game object class. And that gives us some properties that are reused through any object or any component that might be in a Unity game. And these properties, if we go through this document and we just click on any random API example, I bet you it inherits from the game object class and that it shares these properties. I don't want you to memorize what each one of these are. That's not what I'm asking for. But instead, have an idea of what you want it to do and, and then use your best judgment of using the search tool and intelligence to help fine tune it. So now I'm back inside of the editor and I'm playing the game and I'm going to test out our refactor of changing the audio source code a bit. So as I near the Nerf gun, I'm going to collide with it. There's that invisible box collider with the is trigger property set. And I'm hoping that my refactor didn't break the sound that gets played. Nope. I heard the sound effect and everything seems to be working correctly. So I hope this video kind of helped learn the Unity documentation a little bit better. It's a bit overwhelming when you first are getting into development and you're looking at someone else's documentation you're just like whoa what what am I even looking at but I hope that knowing you can use IntelliSense to help you get 90% there and then using the documentation for the rest of the 10% to fine-tune that behavior will make your programming journey a lot better if this was helpful or you liked the video please like and subscribe join my discord for more conversations if you have any questions or comments, leave them below. I'll try to address every single one. Thank you, and I'll see you in the next one.